Yeah, welcome here to Prognost. My name is Tobias Ahlert, um, and I'm here with uh, Johannes uh, Wenninghoff. Johannes, uh, thank you for coming. Yeah, welcome. Mm -hmm. You uh, take with you a really nice uh, discussion point. We talk about liquids, liquids carry over. Yeah, liquids carry over to compressor. So um, often uh, meaning that liquid carryover is responsible for several issues on the machine, but as our experience showed, uh, so much liquid uh, carryover does not happen to a compressor. So. Yeah, that's a point. Uh, yeah. we, I remember very well, we have a lot of hotline calls. Yeah. We're talking about, about yeah, liquid carryover, then we talk about how to recognize it, to identify it, and at the end we, we say, oh, it's not, it's not liquid carryover, it's yeah. something different. So um, that is what you're thinking. It's important to talk about how to recognize it. Yeah, that's and also to give yeah. uh, a good uh, example on that. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. Let's start. And after the session, uh, we are open for some questions from yeah. the audience. And um, yeah, please go on. This presentation is about liquid carryover to compressors. And the topics are what causes liquid carryover to compressors? What are the consequences to the compressor? How to detect what kind of sensors are required? We'll show some case studies with liquid liquid carryover and what to check if liquid carryover is suspected, we will explain. Yeah, compressors are designed and constructed for gas compression duty only. In other words, compressors are pumps for gases. And liquids are incompressible. That means Liquid contributors leads to poor reliability of the machine. A yeah, small amount of liquid in the pipe system can vaporize because of the heat in the suction bottles, so that is not a big issue. But it is also possible that minor liquid uh, does get through the valve in liquid form and it will fall through the cylinder and if it's a small amount, a minor amount, then it also can vaporize due to the heat of the compression. But a higher amount of liquids which fill the cylinder or the compression chamber um, is very dangerous because on the next compression cycle, the piston will try to compress the liquid, which can result in serious damages to the entire machine. Yeah, what causes liquid in the process? Um, it is also it can be impurity from other systems or plants. The most common uh, li uh, liquid uh, will be generated by gas condensation in the suction piping system, and this can be handling by of low boiling point, point gas low environment temperatures, cold start of compressors, or wet gas during compression process. Another point uh, of liquid is the looper oil, which uh, can be go in from the packing lubrication into the crank and compression chamber, or even the cylinder lubrication pipe. Yeah, the consequences of uh, to the machine uh, will be that the uh, piston will push the liquid to the dead center or bottom dead center. And when the piston is close to the dead center, the liquid will be pressed. And one result is that the piston will be lifted a little bit by the liquid. Another point is that this uh, pressure on the liquid will result in significant stress to the drivetrain, means the piston rod, the crosshead, and the connecting rod. And the result of this stress is that we have bending of the rod at TDC position by compression load, 
and we have high tension load of the rod in the BDC position. And such bending and such uh, stress uh, makes a high risk of damages such as cracks, broken rod piston or cross or piston or uh, broken cross heads. Yeah, how to detect uh, liquid inside the machine? So the pressure on liquid resulted in stress on the drivetrain at the dead centers. That means we can pick the this stress by or this stress will cause vibration impacts at TDC and BDC position, uh, which then can be picked up by an acceleration sensor on the crosshead area. Another point is that this pressure of liquid will lift the piston and also uh, result in bending of the rod at the dead centers. And this can be picked up very good by a rod position sensor, means a eddy current or displacement sensor. We have now some cases, and I want to begin with the uh, first case, which is a cold start of a compressor. We have here the history of this case, and the history was that the B compressor was down for three months. The A compressor suddenly has an issue and needs to stop very quickly, and that also means they have to start very quickly the B compressor. The draining procedure were not performed in the case because of this quick start, but they have had three attempts to start the compressors, which all failed by shutdown of the prognosis system. The diagnostic of the ring buffer signals pointed to liquid inside the cylinder, and then the next day they opened the discharge valve on the button and liquid dripped out. Yeah, here we see the uh, signals um, in this worse or critical condition. We have in green the rod position signal and at top the center we have a movement of 1000 micrometers. We see also higher movement on the BDC area. Furthermore, we see strong Vibration impact on the cross set, which is the blue signal, also at BDC area and TDC area. And in this case, uh, we also see um, higher uh, pressure inside the compression chamber measured by the dynamic pressure sensors. This is the crank end side, and this is the head end side. And this I pressure or compression only will be measured if you have a high amount of liquid inside the compression chamber. Another case is the loop oil in a crank end chamber. And uh, <clears throat> here we have measured high rod movement and high corset vibration at BDC immediately after a machine start. Shutdown alarm was initiated by rod position loop, but the shutdown was not active. And the liquid, which was is the oil in this case, passed the discharge valve after about 30 revolutions. And after 50 revolutions, the condition were normal again. Yeah, because the liquid was immediately after the start on crank and compression chamber side only, we assume it was lubrication oil from the packing. Damages did not occur. Here we have the signals of this case, and we see here again a very high movement of the rod at after BDC area, and also a high uh, tension uh, load which causes high vibration 
on the crosshead area. The only crank and compression chamber was affected in this case. Yeah, a third case um, is uh, caused by low environment temperature, and it was in winter time, and when the suction pipe heating failed and liquid accumulation uh, happened in the suction damper, and later it carried over to the suction manifold and compression chamber. And that caused high vibrations and rod movement um, over 11 revolutions, uh, which uh, initiated a protection alert on the system. They have had no direct damages on the compressor drive train. Uh, they stopped the machine um, some minutes later. Uh, and they repaired the electric pipe heating and later they also installed um, an additional separator with uh, level side glasses and level alarming. So here we have the uh, signals. Uh, we have the uh, crosshead vibration in the BDC area, uh, which they are <clears throat> caused by high stress on the drivetrain. Furthermore, we see the rod position signal over here. And the piston in this case was lifted. The sensor was on the mounted on the top, and therefore the amplitude of the signal was lower. The, there was no indication on the uh, dynamic pressure loops, only on rod position and crosshead vibration. Yeah, how to check or what to check if I expect liquid? Um, so we have the two uh, sensors, the crosshead vibration and rod position signal, and the main data analysis are the 30 segmented RMS from the crosshead vibration and eight segmented peak to peak from the rod position signal. So in for identification of liquid carryover, we have to check the TDC area, which is at the beginning and at the end of this 3D waterfall diagram, and also the BDC area, which is in the middle of the 3D um, waterfall diagram. Same can be done for the uh, rod position signal. And if we identify high amplitudes, which are here, are uh, shown by the color code over here, then we have an indication for liquid carryover. So for liquid carryover, check the vibration at cross the vibration and rod movement at TDC and BDC position. Here is a summary of this presentation. Uh, we can say uh, avoid any or, right, or minimize any liquid in the process gas that it net not can go inside the compression compressor. Always provide an adequately sized suction drum with a drain system that you can get out possible liquid in the piping system. And after a longer shutdown phase of a piston compressor, check for any liquid in the pipes and perform training. And finally, I can say from our experience that machine damages on crosshead vibration, crosshead uh, rods, or uh, broken piston caused by liquid carryover don't happen as often as you might think. Is the presentation? Thank you for attention. And now we come to your question.